This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. So now that Fallout 4's Nuka World DLC is out, I figured that it would be worth taking the time to catch up and discuss some of the lore for Fallout 4 going forward. A while back, I made a video talking about what I thought was Fallout 4's canonical ending. Ultimately, I decided that the canonical ending would be the least severe good guy ending where you have the Minutemen and possibly even the Railroad take down the Institute and eject the Brotherhood of Steel from the Commonwealth. I also based my conclusion on companion likes and dislikes and what the majority of key companions tended to prefer. However, since Fallout 4's Nuka World DLC was released, I figured I would take some time to go over some of the implications of its endings and what may actually happen as far as the whole story arc for Fallout 4 goes. Now, again, it should really go without saying, but this video will contain massive spoilers for the Nuka World DLC, so you have been warned. Uh, complete the DLC and come back, or risk having the DLC spoiled for you. Now, the Nuka World DLC really has two endings or story arcs. The first ending involves helping the Raiders retake Nuka World, splitting the parks between the three various gangs, and then using your gangs to invade the Commonwealth. Now, even if the player tries to appease all three factions, the DLC has been designed to where at least one faction gets the short end of the stick. Whichever faction gets the least amount of territory ultimately rebels and takes control of the Nuka Nuka World power plant. The Soul Survivor, along with the two other gangs that remain loyal to the Soul Survivor, enter the plant and kill off the rebel gang leaders, as well as many of its followers as possible. Now, the second ending involves a side quest mission called Open Season. You can either talk to Preston Garvey or an NPC named Mackenzie, and they suggest that you should liberate Nuka World from the Raiders. This quest involves killing the various leaders of each of the gangs, along with Porter Gage, who can be your companion for the Nuka World DLC. So, you have to kill Mags and William Black of the Operators, Nisha of the Disciples, although you end up killing Dixie and Savoy as well, and then of course you kill Mason, who leads the pack. Um, once you kill all of the Raider leaders, the Liberated Traders thank you for restoring Nuka World to what it was before Coulter and the Raider gang conquered them. Now as it goes in previous Fallout games, generally the good karma, least severe ending is the canonical ending. When it comes to Fallout 4 in particular, we can also look to the likes and dislikes of key companions as a guide to what will most likely be the canonical ending. While I can't really say about Nick Valentine, although he generally tends to favor helping people, I think it's safe to say that both Piper and Preston are opposed to the Nuka World Raider gangs, as both generally like helping the Minutemen. Even Dance, who is somebody that prefers the Brotherhood of Steel over all of the other factions, also generally likes helping the Minutemen. So if we were to follow the same logic, it would be fairly obvious that helping the traitors would be the canonical ending for the Nuka World DLC. While the second ending is fairly severe in the sense that you're killing a lot of people, you are arguably killing a lot of the evil NPCs like Gage, Shank, and the various heads of those raider gangs. These people ultimately enslaved the traitors of Nuka World and threatened to blow their collars if they get out of line. However, with all of that said, and to be perfectly honest with you guys, I'm actually torn between whether the sole survivor is going to be a good person and liberate the traitors of Nuka World, or if the sole survivor will ultimately adopt the ways of the Nuka World Raider gangs. On the one hand, helping the traitors is clearly the highest karma solution. There is no doubt about that, and it's also the least severe ending. However, when it comes to quest emphasis, achievements or trophies, and the preferences of Gage as a companion, it seems like the sole survivor could also fall from grace and adopt the tactics and ideology of the Nuka World Raider gangs for the sake of profit or whatever else even if that's something as simple as peer pressure. As I mentioned earlier, open season is actually a side quest. You don't get an achievement for wiping out the various raider gangs in Nuka World at all. You do, however, get several achievements for helping the raiders take over the commonwealth. In fact, 
To complete the DLC as intended by the developers over at Bethesda, you have to play through the mission Power Play, and by this point, the Soul Survivor as Overboss has helped the Raiders conquer portions of the Commonwealth, and they've also, by extension, committed atrocities by doing so. And at this point, you have betrayed Preston Garvey by helping the Raiders deal with the Minutemen. There's also something that Gage says about the Minutemen that's pretty interesting. If you've completed Fallout 4's main questline by having the Minutemen wipe out the Institute, Gage says the following, quote, You know, I've heard about you. In charge of the Minutemen, ain't ya? No idea why you'd waste your time with those has-beens. I ain't no genius, but as far as I'm concerned, history already proved that what they're after ain't gonna work. End quotes. This seems to imply that even if the Soul Survivor defeats the Raider gangs of Nuka World during open season, the Minutemen's days as a viable faction in the Commonwealth are numbered. If we look at the Minutemen compared to all of the other factions from both vanilla Fallout 4 and its DLC, the Minutemen are carrying the weakest weapons and armor. Laser muskets can't compete with the Brotherhood and even the Institute's laser weapons, and since the handmade rifle is now one of Fallout 4's best weapons, how could the laser musket even reasonably compete with that? Plus, we know that the Minutemen were defeated by the Gunners at an event known as the Quincy Massacre. In contrast, the Nuka World Raider gangs seem to be evenly matched with the Gunners in terms of weapons and tactics. You can occasionally witness operators, disciples, or members of the pack taking on members of the Gunners as you walk around Nuka World. Dare I say it? But I could easily see the sole survivors siding with the Nuka World Raider gangs and ultimately betraying Preston Garvey and the Minutemen. The quest emphasis and achievements for Nuka World heavily favor the Raiders, while going against the Raiders strips the player of useful perks and achievements. However, the problem with siding with the Nuka World Raider gangs is that this is ultimately going to allow you to commit atrocities against the people of the Commonwealth. While previous Fallout games have allowed the player to be evil and go as far as committing atrocities, the evil ending or resolutions to various quests never ended up being canonical. Unlike the vanilla game, where you had either the rest of the Minutemen, Brotherhood, or Railroad to help you take down the Institute, or in the case of the Institute, you had the Institute since, which helped you take down the Brotherhood and the Railroad, the sole survivor doesn't get anyone's help to take down the Raider gangs in Nuka World. You can't call up Maxon, Desdemona, or Preston to send soldiers to help you liberate Nuka World. Instead, the sole survivor has to do it all by themselves. Even if the sole survivor does want to do the right thing, can they realistically even do it? And seriously, think about it for a second. Let's say that, hypothetically, there are 500 or so raiders that control Nuka World. Can just one guy fight off 500 men and women armed to the teeth with some of the best weapons the Fallout universe has to offer? Even in power armor, XO-1 power armor, I somehow doubt that one guy can fight off three different raider gangs of about a hundred members or more. We also have to consider the sole survivor's position as overboss and just how precarious it really is. Eventually, even if the sole survivor doesn't decide to invade the commonwealth with the raider gangs, who's to say that Gage and the heads of the three other raider gangs don't eventually conspire to kill the sole survivor, just like the sole survivor ended up killing Coulter? Depending on how you look at it, the amoral combat side quest has you killing other people that were strong enough to get through the gauntlet just like you did. So even as overboss, your status and ability to manage and control the gangs is questionable at best, and you might even be able to suggest that it's being undermined constantly. And yes, while you can rig the gauntlet to kill your challenger, it's better for morale if you ultimately fight the would-be challenger. Depending on how you look at it, the raider gangs control the sole survivor and can greatly influence who becomes overboss of the three different gangs. If they don't like the overboss they've got, they simply rig the fight so the overboss loses, or if they like the overboss, they rig the fight in a way that he remains overboss. 
Gage himself even admits that he doesn't want to be the leader and ultimately decides to be more of an advisor, to control and rule via proxy. At the most, all the sole survivor can do is hold the gangs at bay for as long as they can until they are eventually usurped by a challenger from the gauntlet. So I think in conclusion, whether it's by the sole survivor's hand or not, the Nuka World Raider gangs will eventually invade the Commonwealth and defeat the Minutemen. The Minutemen are simply too disorganized and ill-equipped to take on the Nuka World's gangs, who are both well-equipped and highly experienced in conquering and subjugating others to do their bidding. Even if the sole survivor makes the right choices and somehow even defeats the Nuka World gangs, isn't the fall of the Minutemen inevitable? The Minutemen's eventual fall also parallels the fall of the Brotherhood of Steel one or two years after the events of Fallout 3. And based on how the Brotherhood acts in Fallout 4, they are nothing like how they were under Elder Lions. Even Dance compares the Minutemen to the Brotherhood under Elder Lions by saying that they were ultimately too charitable, disorganized, and unfocused for their own good. Ultimately, I guess we will see what happens by the time of the next Fallout game, but I have a feeling that the Minutemen won't be around by that time. Alright guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. Uh, let me know, do you think that the Minutemen is going to last, or do you think the Nuka World Raider gangs are going to take over? But anyway guys, again, take care and I'll see you all next time.